Hello everyone, Sonley here, welcome back to another Minecraft Bedrock Edition tutorial. In this one, I'll be showing you how to build three very simple, cheap, and efficient guardian farms in your world. Whether that be a realm or a single player, these farms will work wherever you're building them. So before we hop into all the details about these three separate farms, it's very important to note that you don't actually need to remove your guardian temple or remove barely any water whatsoever. As you can see, we've only removed four layers of water in this setup right here. And this is one of the more efficient guardian farms that I'll be showing you how to build in this video. So in addition to showing you how to build these guardian farms, I'll also be covering all of the guardian spawning mechanics at the end of this video. So if you're interested in all the behind the scenes and all the weird quirkiness of bedrock, I'll be telling you about how these farms actually work as well. Now these farms are pretty much the most efficient that they can really be on bedrock. I know that's usually like a clickbait thing, but this is pretty much what we got to work with. And the best rates that I've been able to squeeze out of these farms is around 15,000 drops per hour, which honestly isn't too bad. That'll also get you 45 levels in about five minutes. So overall, a pretty decent guardian farm. The first design I'll be showing you how to build in this video is a very simple overworld only lava kill system. So this one can be fully AFK'd by just a single player. There is no nether involved whatsoever. However, it does have a few cons in that you have to remove your ocean monument. You have to clear a lot more water and it gets pretty low rates, only about 4,200 drops per hour. The second design is a pretty modest little thing, and this is somewhat standard on Bedrock Edition at the moment. So what we have here is basically just a layout of nether portals, and this does require two players, one to AFK in the overworld, and another to AFK in the nether, where all of your guardians will then die. So this gets a pretty decent 8,500 drops per hour. However, you do need two players to make this work properly, but it can be done with one. Simply AFK in the overworld for about 15 minutes and then go to the nether, allow for the lag to dissipate, and then collect your drops. The final and best farm is simply a modified version of the previous farm that I just showed you. And this one will get you about 15,000 drops per hour. And it will also get you about 45 levels in just under 5 minutes. So the proper way to use this one is to have one player in the overworld AFK spawning in all the guardians. And then having a second player in the nether actually killing all the guardians, collecting the experience and getting the drops. However, you can use it with one player, just stand in the overworld for a little while, and then go to the nether and kill all of your guardians. Alright, so let's go through a little bit of a summary of the rates of these farms, and now these rates are with basically a perfect perimeter. So we have some command blocks that kill everything that is not a guardian. So if you don't basically light up your oceans and if you don't light up your caves either, you will get less rates than this in survival. However, this is like the maximum rates that you could potentially achieve in your survival world. So for the basic lava killing design, which uses the overworld only, you'll get about 4,200 drops per hour with a perfect perimeter. I do not have rates for a non-perimeter design. Now with a basic nether portal to the nether design that if kills the guardians using fall damage, you will get around 8,500 drops per hour. The nether portal is going to the nether and a looting three design using a full perimeter, you will get about 14,000 drops per hour and 45 levels in just under five minutes, which is pretty amazing. With a looting three farm and no perimeter whatsoever, you still get about 8,300 drops per hour and 35 levels and in just under five minutes. So if you want to do the absolute least amount of work possible, I would highly, highly suggest just building up the looting farm and going with that because it's a good source of experience and you also get the most rates for the least amount of work. All right, so now that you know everything that you need to know about your three guardian farms, let's hop into the tutorial, shall we? So no matter which farm you want to build, you're going to have to do the entire first part of this tutorial, and that is marking out your guardian temple and then also marking out your spawning spaces as well. Very important step, and you have to do this for every single farm. So the first thing that you want to do is go down to the bottom of your ocean down here, and then from the direct corner of your monument, basically just build up a sand pillar or just a pillar of blocks. Sand is just really easy to move. And then just bring this up to the surface on all four corners, of course. So now that you have your four pillars on the corners in place, you need to go ahead and connect them up with just a series of blocks. So just place some blocks off of that, connect them up to that pillar, connect that one to that one, that one to that one. Pretty simple and bog standard, and we can just do it like that. So that is basically the finished product of what you...
And now it's time for the very, very time consuming part of this build, and that is marking out all of the guardian spawn locations. So as you can see, they are currently marked out with some orange wool. I did that using some commands and this, it, all of this right here is the only places that guardians will spawn in your entire ocean monument. There is only 25 spawning spaces and bedrock edition ocean monuments. It is kind of uh, the worst thing ever. <laughs> so it's very, very important that you actually mark these out correctly. Otherwise your farm will not spawn guardians because again, these are the only spots that actually spawn guardians. It's ridiculous. So the first thing that we're going to be doing on camera is figuring out this main cross right here. Once you have this main cross in place, figuring out all of the other spawn locations is very, very simple and easy because it's basically just a little grid, but this grid is not evenly spaced, which makes everything a little bit more tedious, but I'll be showing you the exact dimensions uh, on screen in just a minute. So we're going to go to the north side of our monument right here, and that is our north pillar. So grab yourself a locator map. The top of the map is always north and your little icon is where you are facing. So we're going to the northwest side of our map over here, and we're just gonna place down two blocks, and then the third block in is going to be our first spawning space. So definitely use some blocks with borders for easy counting, and then use a random identi identifier block so that you actually know where your spawning spaces are. So go 10 blocks south, and you will be at your next spawning location, 10 blocks east, and then you will be at your next spawning location, and then another 10 blocks north, and that is your fourth spawning location, and all of these should, of course, line up perfectly. So from this one over here, you wanna go south by 15 blocks. And that is your next spawning location, and then you need to go east by another 10 blocks. So over here by 10 blocks is our next spawn location, and then you need 15 more blocks towards the center of your monument right here, so that should be 15 right there and this is the very center block of your entire monument from here it is pretty easy to figure out everything else so go ahead and place 15 blocks to your north and that will be your next spawning location 15 blocks to your east and that will be your next spawning location there and then finally 15 blocks to your south and that is your next spawning location right there just decided to switch out our indicator block for a redstone block that way it actually stands out against the water Anyway, we are now on the southmost spawning block that we've marked out, and you need to go down by nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And then on the 10th block is your spawning spot. And then on your west or east side, rather, you need to go out by nine blocks as well. And then the 10th block should be your next spawning spot. On the north side, you need to go out by 10 blocks. And then on the 11th, should be your next spawning spot. And that should line up perfectly with that one. And this should line up perfectly with that as well. So because this is a grid, it's just an awkwardly spaced grid, everything lines up. So from here, all you need to do is make a bridge going out this way, and then basically just stop once you hit that block. And then this should be perfectly lined up with that. And then what you can do is make a bridge going this way, stop once you hit this block, and this one is lined up with that. And that it's very simple. So just by lining up these spawning spaces, you should be able to figure out how to do all of these additional corners without any on-screen help. You guys know me though, I'm not gonna leave you hanging without some actual numbers to work from. So the top left of the screen is where we started placing blocks and everything is pretty much marked out for you guys. So pause the video here, take your screenshots and then build this in your survival world. For those of you who are in creative and want to do this process in a much simpler and easy way, don't worry, I have something for you. So go ahead and set up a repeating command block that is set to killing all the guardians, and then get another command block on repeat as well. This is the command that you need to find all the guardians in the world and replace them with a wool block or just any kind of indicator block. Off of that, we have a chain kill command block, and this is killing all the guardians as well. So after you've cleared out all the original guardians in the world, uh, go ahead and set this up, and then you can actually disable your main kill guardian command. The reason why we need to kill them all first is because there's going to be guys, you know, swimming around in places where they don't actually spawn. So just make sure you clear them out, and then you can set up these commands as well. This is where the tutorial starts to split a little bit. So if you want to build either of the farms that have nether portals and send the guardians to the nether for killing, then what you need to do is you need to build up your walls by th three blocks tall. You then need to build up your floor underneath that. That can be made out of any material that you like, of course. And then you need to drain this entire thing of water. It is harder said than done. 
And yes, harder said than done. <laughs> so that is pretty much what we have. Of course, keep in all of your spawning spot identifiers. You can remove all of these extra blocks here if you like. Um, but if you want to build the farm that uses lava in the overworld, you're going to need to clear out a lot more water. So you're going to need to clear out 17 blocks of water and your floor should be at Y47. And honestly, if you're building the lava farm, you also need to remove your entire temple as well because otherwise there is some problems with guardian spawning. And just to get the lava design out of the way at first because it's super simple and easy, uh, everywhere that you have a spawning space, you need to go two blocks beneath the surface of the ocean and then place down a Four water sources have a two block air gap and then a lava source and then just three blocks of flowing water, a sign and then two air gaps underneath that have yourself a hopper and then just a chest. So yeah, the floor is actually going to be at Y46 instead of 47. Sorry about that. My bad. And of course, you just build one of these at every single one of your spawn locations. So you'll need to build 25 of these in total. And it's not very good. I don't foresee many people building this, but if you want to, you can. And that is how to do it. And back on track with our standard tutorial. So we are currently in the northwest side of our ocean monument where we started out our tutorial. And this is one of our spawning spaces. This is three blocks beneath the surface of the water on our standard floor. And what you need to do is go ahead and surround this with just a little bit of glass. Doesn't need to be glass, but it looks the nicest. And then it just go ahead and build up yourself a nether portal. This is going to be a fair few nether portals. You need 25 in total. And uh, then just go ahead and light that thing. Remove your indicator block and place down a water source. So any guardians that spawn in this one water source right here will then just be immediately pushed into your portal. And that's really all there is to it. So go ahead and build that for each and every single one of your 25 spawning spaces. And as long as you don't have any other portals in the nether, these should all link up to one portal and all the guardians should come out of that one portal in the nether. You shouldn't need to do anything at all. So another side kill chamber is about as simple as it sounds. You drop them 32 plus blocks. I would recommend dropping them 35 just to be safe. It is bug rock after all. And then they fall to their death. You will also want to drop them on top of slabs so that the hoppers don't bug out and not pick up items. And you are pretty much good to go for AFKing your farm. Have one player in the overworld, one player in the nether, and you can AFK for as long as you like. So setting up the nether side for your looting and experience farm is actually super simple as well. So this should be your main portal where all of your guardians come out. And this is just going to go into a simple 2x2 two two drop shoot. And it's going to go down by 14 blocks. So at the very top two blocks, there is going to be a layer of lava and then flowing lava. And then just some signs underneath that to keep it flowing down further. And there's also a one block gap above that. So the bottom layer of your portal should be one block above that lava just want to be clear about that and then all the way down from there 14 blocks down from the bottom of your portal there is going to be half slabs and this is going to be on top of your hoppers and this is going to be your main kill chamber so all the drops from your guardians will go into the hoppers and then go into whatever storage system you like when you're in here using this you need to flip up these trap doors so that the thorns from the guardians don't knock you all the way out which can happen because uh, they got some serious thorns. So then you basically just stand here, you hit them, you collect their drops and experience. Pretty bog standard. We also have a button. This button dispenses some lava in case there are just too many guardians and you are lagging out. That is a very necessary thing to have. And the cool thing is it doesn't actually destroy all of the drops either. Uh, so you still get some of the drops even though you kill them all using lava, which is kind of cool. Now we do have a beacon over here and that is for regen and resistance one that will basically permanently keep you from dying, which is lovely. You don't want to die while using this farm. And we also have full golden armor, two sets of which have protection for you definitely need this to be like fully enchanted with at least unbreaking and mending to use this farm because guardians do a lot of damage when you attack them. The sword, of course, has sharpness, looting, mending, unbreaking, all the good stuff. And that is really all there is to the guardian kill chamber in the nether again there it is take your screenshots and that's all there is to it after you build up your guardian farm no matter which design you do you need to do a little bit of cleanup in the overworld as well so the first thing to do is to actually go through your ocean monument if it is still there and kill any and all guardians that you see it might honestly be easier to just tear down the entire thing in order to find them all but 
whatever you decide to do just make sure all the guardians get killed and then also go underneath and around your monuments because there are likely guardians off just swimming around doing their own thing now you're also going to need to either light up the entire ocean floor or slab it now lighting up the sea floor is not a strictly necessary step however if you're playing on a realm people likely want you to do this anyway because drowns never despawn unless they are in light level seven or above so like yeah just getting rid of these guys in general is really helpful because they stack up and they spawn so much and they don't despawn so every four blocks you can place four sea pickles so have a four block gap or you can use jack-o-lanterns or you can use sea lanterns or if you want to you can slab the entire bottom of the ocean but slabs have zero chance of actually despawning any existing drowns so i would suggest it just lighting it up using sea pickles have a very efficient sea pickle farm and you can get a ton of sea pickles very very quickly using that so we're now at that point in the video where i will quickly go over just a few of the guardian spawning mechanics so as you guys know there's really only these 25 spots in the ocean monument where they spawn now technically these spawning spots are columns so they start from one block beneath the surface and go down to the bottom of the monument so uh, it would technically be all of these spots that they can technically spawn in. Uh, however, they start from the top down, which is why we need to remove so little water for this. And if they can spawn at the very top block, then they will. So that's pretty much it. There will never be any guardians spawning underneath this. It's very, very simple. Now, if there were no water here and just a solid block, all of the lower attempts would actually be aborted because that solid block blocks all spawns underneath this which is but if this were a transparent block like glass or a slab or something then the spawning attempt would actually move downwards to this position if that one was blocked it would go down and just keep on going now guardians actually required two blocks of space to spawn so if we had the water here and we had also a block there then they wouldn't spawn they require two full blocks of space so guardians can now also spawn in flowing water sources and also in bubble columns as well but that's not actually as useful as it sounds because as the lava farm shows any overworld only farm really sucks for rates pretty much yeah just don't even bother with it nether is pretty much the only way to go instantly unload them instantly kill them pretty much the only way to go for a guardian farm and one final thing to mention about this farm put your afk spot about 20 or so blocks above your center nether portal and you will be good to go and if you guys enjoyed this video learned something or just got some use out of these farms please do leave a like many long hours long nights many days and live streams of testing went into making all these farms possible making them as efficient as possible for your faces so likes are very much appreciated if you guys are new here as well maybe consider subscribing as well because i upload tutorials like this all the time and you guys do not want to miss those do ya if you got any questions comments or concerns about any of these farms at all hit me up in the comments section i'm down there all the time reading you guys' comments trying to help you out as much as i can and that is going to do it for this one again thank you ever so much for watching i'll see you down in the comment section and in the next video and then there was silence